Hello everyone, I'm Amber Irwin with Social Speak Network and I'm so excited that we have a special guest on today, Miss Tabitha Blue, and we are going to learn all about her and her story and I've really been enjoying this mompreneur interview series because I love seeing how us as women and mothers and wives and whatever other hat we want to wear, how we can be successful and really create the life that we truly want to live. So Tabitha is all about that. I am so excited. Welcome, Tabitha. Thank you for being on today. Thank you. I'm super excited to be on this series. I think it's a fabulous series. Like you said, it's a way to look and learn from other people who are doing different things and have so, taken some of the leaps that we all want to take. So yes. it's a great yeah. way to. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think that's, um, you know, one of the things is a lot of women, they have an idea in their head of, okay, mm -hmm. maybe I can try this or maybe I can do that. And they're, that fear is too, you know, too strong that it's hard for them to, to be able to take that leap of faith. So having different women that have tried different things and been successful at different things, it gives them that hope. Okay, maybe I can do it. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So right? tell us about, about you. What do you do? How did you get started and what you do? Yeah. So I am, like Amber mentioned, my name is Tabitha Blue. I am a life coach and a lifestyle blogger at freshmommyblog.com. So Fresh Mommy Blog is my brand and my business. Um, that's the business that I've kind of um, mompreneured my way into <laughs> <laughs> and, and work on. And really my heart behind all of it is just to help multi-passionate women do more of what they love to do. Um, that's what I find a lot of times about moms. I think most of your uh, listeners here are moms. So um, it was a good fit because that's, most of us are multi-passionate. Obviously we're passionate about our families and our kids, but there's still those passions and desires in us to do something else as well. Mm -hmm. And, and you can, that's the thing. You don't have to let all that go to the wayside to raise a family. You can do both of it successfully. And I think if that's on your heart or if there's something in there that you want to do, doing that is actually so beneficial to your children because they see you being happy and pushing through and doing something you love. I've seen that in your, in your daughter so much just through social media, like the things she's learning and nice. doing and believing in herself that she can do because she sees mommy doing this or that. Right. And I think that, you know, before, um, you know, moms had to give up so much to right. that stay at home mom and take care of the family and, and the house. And now with having Wi-Fi, having a computer, having your phone, being able to create that life is completely, there's, the possibilities are endless. So tell us a little bit more about what Fresh Mommy Blog is, because I think every mom out there at one point in time has said, I just need to start a blog. I mean, I am, I'm not kidding you, Tabitha. I probably have, have started like five mommy blogs. I've never followed right. them because I, I'm like, well, other moms aren't going to want to hear about us or what, whatever, you know. So what does Fresh Mommy Blog do? What is, what's behind it? Yeah, what's behind it? Um, so there's the thing. Like just even going to that, um, you know, wanting to start a blog. For me, it's a different path. Like, and I'll, I'll tell you that, and it, but it's not for everyone. So right. like your business right now is not a mommy blog. You totally could do it, but right. it's also a lot of work for me. It's a full-time job yeah. pretty much. So your focus is on something else. And so everyone's businesses online and online presence can look different. And that's what I love about it. We don't have to um, compete. Even if it is a mommy blog, there's a different, a mm -hmm. difference in it. We all have a different voice and a different thing. So Mine, uh, my story is kind of funny. It actually started as a hobby. Um, years ago, my old, when my oldest was born, um, it kind of launched me into it, but as a hobby. And actually my mom, it was blogs were newer and she had heard about it before me. So she was like, there's these things called blogs and we should start one. You know, we should both start one. Da, da, da. And I was like, okay. So, so I did. Um, but she didn't, I'm still waiting to see hers, <laughs> um, like a, but, but it kind of helped me launch into it. And then, um, same with photography images are very, um, important to me. That all started too when my daughter was born. So really she's the one that yeah. got me into all of it. I mean, I remember going to a camera store and I was like, I cannot take a photo of my daughter, especially back then. Remember how the lights would like flash yeah. before the flash would happen. And so yeah, every photo of my daughter, she looked 
terrified. I mean, she just was like, you know, so I was like, I need a camera that can take a picture really fast without scaring my child. And, and then kind of learned and grew and, and self-taught from there. And now I work with brands from Target to, um, I mean, just to Folgers to things. And a lot of it is based on imagery and it's also based on the, the voice um, that I use and how I connect with, um, the, you know, my readers and people that follow me. So what fresh mommy blog is, is a, a lifestyle blog. It's very much a mommy blog. I have four children. Um, <laughs> so that weaves its way in there a lot, right. but it's also that, that idea that kind of how you, how you mentioned a little bit ago, what is it that you're passionate about? If it's about children and your kids, and that's it. That's great. If it's your kids and you, and this business or something in your home, my goal is to help make that life for you easier. My goal is to inspire you to say, yeah, you can do it. What is it that makes you come alive? What is it that makes you excited to wake up in the morning? Do that and take your kids along for the ride with you. Yeah. Um, and they learn and grow and want to do their own so much through that. So my kids are 11, 8, five and two and most of them are talking about businesses that they want to start and the things that they want to do and their mind doesn't go right to a corporate job it goes to creation I think it's because they've seen that what do you I mean and that's how the landscape really of uh, with social media and stuff how it's looking now anyway mm -hmm. so I just like it and I don't mind if they want to go to a corporate job but they're ideas are bigger. My daughter is obsessed with horses. So she's looking at how can I have a horse farm and have it work for me and pay for itself and wow. lease horses and all this. And so she's thinking of, and she's 11 and she's trying to think of ways to make that happen eventually. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's, it's something, um, so Tabitha does a really cool vision board workshop and I had taken that, it was probably in January mm -hmm. and her daughter was there and she was doing a vision board. And I love that because, you know, that's something that I've done with my daughter too. Now hers, she's only five. So hers was just like right. pictures of stuff. But, you know, Tabitha's daughter was, you know, had horses and really thought about that. And I mean, for 11 years old, that life experience that she's had already, I mean, you're really setting such a strong foundation for each of your children. But I think that she, since she's the oldest, she's been able to see the transition probably the most. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, because really, um, so as kind of my brand and my blog started out as a hobby, um, it was about five years ago. So, I mean, she was already of the age to remember, um, you know, about five years ago is when I kind of went through a rebrand and decided to look at it and treat it more as a business. Okay. It was still going to be um, me weaving words and images together to tell a story. Right. But... I also realized, you know what, this, I can monetize and it can be our income. And, um, so that was about five years ago when I really looked at it as a business and treated it as such, yeah. put in the time and the effort of it being my other baby, my business yeah. baby. Yep. And, and real and about two years ago, I mean, now our, you know, I can support our family, um, our entire family, our growing family for the last couple of years from it. So it's grown from what was a hobby for a while and just kind of finding my voice and finding all that. And those things, that's what I, I love. I'm kind of going in a circle, but what about vision boarding is it pulls out some of the things that maybe you forgot about that you loved, or sometimes it pulls out those things that are in there and you're, and you can look at it in a different way and say, okay, this is something I love to do. How can I make this a business? That's how mine began Honestly, I didn't start out saying I'm going to have a blog and it's going to be a mommy blog or a lifestyle blog and we're going to live off of it and it's going to grow and we're going to do these things. Yeah. It started because I loved to write and I love to tell our stories and, and weave those together with images and share it for our family to, to read. <laughs> and, yeah. and, then, and then it grew from there. Uh, but looking back, um, I, that's what I used to do in school and I would write little stories and little books and my mom has these you know things from when I was young so yeah. it's always been in there and so that's to me what the freedom that comes in yeah creating your own brand or creating your own business is taking those things that are already in you that you loved since you were little and weaving it together now to say okay but now we're going to make it a business that supports my family 
No, I mean, we're going to, it doesn't mean all the business side of everything is always fun, right. but, um, I mean, I get asked the question a lot. How do you do it all? Which for when I don't, <laughs> we'll just put that out there. I don't, but, but I do realize that you get a lot more done when you love what you do. Right. Yes. You know, so yeah. you're able to do more things I feel like, or at least it looks like you do. I do have a download shameless plug on my website called how to get it all done. And I talk yeah. about it a little bit. Like I said, the first thing is I don't, but I do talk about that a little bit anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's important though, because you know, you are a mother of four children you are also a wife. You are also a friend, a daughter. And so you, you know, as a woman, we wear all these hats and I think it's hard, you know, just my, in my own personal experience, having a, having a business for so long, the first thing, you know, is okay, if I want to reach here, I can't do everything myself because I, it is important. You still have to be hundred percent present in your kids' lives and you still need to have your relationship with your husband. So having, creating that team or putting those systems in, in, in play where you can delegate that's, mm -hmm. you know, so have you found that by doing that, finding the right team or the right people to work with has helped create more of that freedom and flexibility in your life? Absolutely. Um, for one, my husband and I are a really big team. Um, he does a lot at home. Our, fle our schedules are both flexible. So um, we are able to work with each other um, on projects together, um, especially now. So his, his job for a long time is very, I mean, kind of like ours when you're on the computer and stuff, very mental. Um, so we found that there's a lot of release in doing something with your hands. And actually it's a, there's a lot of studies that show that. So like if you're spend a lot of time um, thinking or writing or it's all kind of in the headspace, right. do something with paper or wood or something because it uses a different part of your brain. And even though you might be working or creating or doing something, it's giving that other part of your brain a rest or a break okay. and kind of building that creativity. So, um, so he's a part of the team. So we kind of joke because at one point um, I had, so like I'll come up with projects. Part of our, our blog or brand is we're remodeling our home and kind of showing how you can DIY a lot of it. So um, I had given it, we'd done a couple of projects and he was like, this is really cool. It's using, you know, kind of like, Hey, like that study, it's using a different part of my brain. And you know, whenever you have, stuff let me know well now <laughs> now we have a lot of projects he's probably regretting saying that um, that one little thing right exactly thing. now it's like oh okay now we're going to do the whole house <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have a lot of creative use with your hands like building yeah. walls and stuff um but so he's a huge part of the team there always comes a point in business too where you kind of look at i'm at a point where you have to kind of invest in it to grow um, and I got to that point where I was doing everything myself, but it got to the point where I didn't have time to do more. So it was either stay there or invest in a little bit more of a team yeah. to grow and go to the next step. And, um, and so that's what I did. So I actually do have a couple other people on my team. I have someone that does, I try to delegate the things that I don't like as yeah. much as possible. Um, so SEO is something for me in an online business that's really important. Right. That, I mean, I was studying and reading about. Um, Google is like my best friend. Um, <laughs> but, but still, it was just a lot of time and effort. So I do have someone that does that um, part of it for me. Right. And then also another um, girl that is a part-time employee. So she'll come and we'll um, do a lot of the creative work together. So she'll help with photo shoots and styling and different things like that editing. So a yeah. lot of those tasks, um, help kind of pull a little bit more off my plate so then I can do more, right. um, of the ideas that we have yeah. and things like that. So a team really does help, but it, here's the thing. Um, I didn't start that way. Right. That's something I grew into. Yeah. And so it's okay to start. It's not always easy find yourself, surround yourself with other people that are doing it just to maybe sometimes commiserate or encourage each other. Yes. But when you start a business, I mean, kind of like a baby, I look at it so much as equate it as having babies and it's awesome that there's moms here because they know exactly what I'm talking yeah. about <laughs> is, I mean, yes, someone helped you get started, but you do it 
you carry that baby. Yeah. You're the one that does it. You push that baby out. You're the one that does it. And so there's a lot of it that's on you and kind of the same way with having four kids. A lot of times I'll get asked like, how did you know when you were ready to have kids or how did you know when, you know, we want to have kids, but we don't know when we'll be ready. Yeah. And my answer to that is usually just, you don't, you don't know. know. We always want to have everything together and have it perfect. And then, okay, now I'm going to have kids. And we never got to that point. We never got. If anyone ever does. Right. (laughs) So if you wait for that, it'll never happen. You'll never have a family. You'll never start that business. You'll never take that leap because you're not going to have everything ready and everything perfect. So kind of the same for starting a business. When you know it's time to make that jump, you don't. (laughs) Right. But when you feel ready enough you just do it, like, you know, and it just, like I said, but you're the one um, that's been kind of incubating that idea for a long time, thinking about it, pondering on it. And then it just comes time where you're like, okay, it's going to be rough for a little bit, but I got to push this idea out. <laughs> yeah. I, well, and it's so true because it's like you, um, in the beginning, I mean, like I, I remember when I started my business, I kind of fell into it. So it's one of those things where a lot of women that I'm talking to, it's like, you know, it's, I didn't plan for this. I didn't, you know, like as they've kind of grown into their business, right? Like, oh, okay, this is why this happened, or this yeah. now I can create. But no one have I, you know, have I t- spoken to yet that has said like they started their business and the next morning they woke up and they're a millionaire. They were yeah. so, you know, like it's not an overnight success. So it is so much like raising a kid because you have to put in that time and you have mm-hmm. to you know, document everything. And I think that when you write that list down of what are those things in your business you love to do, like why you're doing the business and those other things on the side that you're like, I really don't want to, you know, maybe it's your bookkeeping, maybe it's your social media, your video editing, whatever it may be. If you're, if those are the things, I think that sometimes those things that you don't want to do can eat at you so much and then that is, you know, that discourages you from moving forward because yeah, it caused you to stall. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So what did you do? So let's just step back a minute. What did you do before you started the blog? Um, so my business was, um, I did a lot of working with different companies, but I had for a long time, I worked in an office and I actually did graphic design. Okay. Um, so that was a good background. Yes. <laughs> Behind it. Andy. Um, yeah, we lived in Michigan for a long time. And the same time that I rebranded was when we moved here to Florida, where we are now. When I lived in Michigan, I did have a photography studio. So I actually had um, a business. It wasn't as full time. It was more of a um, side hustle. (laughs) It really taught me about the hustle. It taught me about working a business and a passion that I love. Um, And so I had a photography studio. Actually, we built it out in our home. Okay. Um, and so you can kind of see too where some of that graphic design and that photography come into play now with what I do. And it does it all just kind of wraps in together. Um, and then for years and years, I've um, been a spokesmodel for different okay. companies. So a ambassador kind of, yeah, and I still do a little bit of that. Um, but I used to do a, a lot more. Okay. And that also encompassed the things I love travel and speaking and different things. So it all kind of wraps up into what I do now. It's just all been training grounds yeah. really for what it is, but it was all different ways, I guess, of seeing different industries. Oh, yeah. um, so I've always had that little bit of a um, um, wanderlust right. attitude. Yes. <laughs> um, so that's where that travel came in and different things. Yeah. Well, and so like each of those things that you did kind of they all play a role in your business now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Like how your journey, you know, you, you started off here and then you're able to take skills from that and you move, you know, so each piece of your journey has now, you know, you can encompass those things into your business now. Right. Yep, exactly. And that's why I have a heart for multi-passionate women to yeah. do those things. I've always been one that's like, okay, this is cool. Let's just do it. I mean, when I was 18, um, I started a boutique in my parents' basement and would do like, um, runway shows and so, like trunk shows and runway shows and get all my friends in to like be in the runway shows. And about the same time, 
I um, bought a, a house, a little house, and like hired a team to flip it. So like just, yeah, it was crazy. And so that was all those things. Like I was still living at home, but I bought a house and I didn't live in it, but like just those things. And so now all of those things are coming into play where, you know, um, even with our, our blog, I don't want women to feel like they have to give up fashion right yeah and have kids so here's some options or choices to still be fashionable but oh my gosh yeah comfortable because you're chasing kids around yes. and like obviously with our home series um that we have on youtube and remodeling and stuff and it's crazy like you said to see all those things that were passions of mine in different ways where i was like oh yeah let's just run run with it but yeah. it was just different training grounds for yeah for what i do now and now my heart is to be like is to this, to do that with women. What is it that was in you? What were you doing when you were five and you were playing? What was it that you were like, this is, you know, I'm setting up a cupcake stand, you know, whatever. What is it that, what is it that you always went to? Like, this is going to be fun. This is what I want to do and pull, pull out of that. Um, I think a lot of times too, before we start and then even after <clears throat> we feel like we have to have it all together. Yeah. It's such a big, I feel like, especially on women, probably the same for men, but I mean, I'm not in the mind of a guy, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I want to be. <laughs> but I know women do. And, and especially when we have a growing family and then we want to start a business and we feel like, okay, but so I need to make sure it's all together at home and my kids are doing well and, and this is all well and it looks good. And then, but also this business. And so either before we start, we feel like we have to have it all together first or I would even say when you've seen success, it feels the same way because it's that pressure to continue it. And um, when we feel that, it continually builds that pressure because we're seeing, okay, I'm not doing this because I'm passionate about it or, or I'm excited about this. I'm doing it because I need to put out content or I need to have it all together. I need to make sure it looks good whatever it is. But what I've really seen from that is it kind of builds in that imposter syndrome. That's when that tries to kick in. And I feel like, especially for women in business, that's such a huge thing. Um, it is. Yeah. And just a definition for it. Cause it kind of sounds weird. I know you know what it is, but maybe not everyone does, but basically yeah. it's a, so it's defined as a collection of feelings, um, of inadequacy that kind of tend to persist and come at you even when you've seen success. So a lot of times it actually kind of ramps up the more success that you build in business. Um, and actually a lot of researchers show that it's especially true in prof people that have perfectionism and in women. So yes. I feel like that's talking to a lot of us. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm always like, yeah, right here. Um, mm -hmm. And so I feel like that when you're, um, building a business like for me at different times there's been kind of two struggles in working for myself or working from home one is just i think a lot of it comes when you do hit some success one is the lack of hunger when you've hit some like the idea to okay i'm gonna take a breath and stop for a minute and then you're not building or growing and so really life is always in motion. You're going forward or backwards. So when you're just like, oh, okay, I'm just going to ride it for a while. Well, you end up kind of moving backwards. So yeah. that lack of hunger or drive or even just motivation sometimes, like some days you're just like, I just don't want to get out of bed. <laughs> um, as a mom, that doesn't usually happen, but in business, you can kind of take that mentality on it. Yeah. And then also the, um, imposter syndrome that, that really tries to kick in. And so, um, I think the biggest thing is when those feelings try to rise up is just to remind yourself that it's normal and it's okay to not know everything Yeah. before you start or while you're in it, it's okay. Like it's something that you can grow and learn as you go. Yeah. Um, and then, then get your plan together and work your plan. <laughs> well, it's also, you know, like when you are starting off in a business or you have an idea is, I always like to have, you know, like that tribe of people that mm -hmm. truly believe in you, that support you. And most of the time I have found like, you know, your husband 100% supports you and, you know, is, is behind you. Like we're doing this. And my husband's the same for me. He's like my one, number one cheerleader. 
at the same time, I feel like sometimes if they don't have that support at home, it's hard for them to move forward. And they're so afraid of being judged. And am I doing this right? And, and that perfection comes in where then it's like, okay, well, it's not, it's not to this level. I'm, I can't do it. And where it's important to have that tribe of people, whether it is at home or just women, you know, I know when I started my business, I, I networked a lot and I had a group of women um, we were called, the, the group was called L group and it was a woman's group, but those women loved me. They wanted to see me succeed. And so that like, I'm like, well, gosh, if they believe in me, like I got this, so I can do this. So I think it's important as women to, to create that tribe that you can, of having that support because you can't do it by yourself and you're always going to grow. And I mean, like you said, it's just, it's, you're either moving forward or backwards and you have to choose which, which way do you want to go? Yeah, exactly. Definitely. Um, I think for women that maybe feel too, like they don't have the support at home as much. Yeah. Um, and it's not that I didn't have support in the beginning, but it was more of a hobby or like I said, it was just something that I did. Yeah. Once success started to come a little bit and my husband was like, oh, this is um, more than just your hobby. It's more than just the thing you're doing. It's actually, I mean, there's a lot to it. And then also the, the realization that I was going to need to hire someone or, you know, so he's like, okay, so we're going to come out of pocket for you to hire someone else or I'll do it, <laughs> you know, yeah, type of a yeah. thing to really bring us together as a team. He's always been super supportive. Um, but to really more look at it as a team where we're in this together, you and I were, we're doing it together, um, has really brought it to another level. Um, but it, but same thing, I was the one that pushed the baby out. And so, um, I definitely believe having a tribe around you is huge. It's important to give you that, you know, kind of like that as a, like a doula to give you that encouragement because you're the one that's going to be doing the work, <laughs> but yep, you need that. So, okay. So I am, I, I love when, you know, people always say blogging can make you money blogging, blogging, blogging. And so there's the people that love to write and it comes natural to them. And then there's the people that it's a little bit more difficult, but it's something they want to do. So they have to just work a little bit harder. At what point in your blogging process, I know that, you know, you've only been taking it like serious for five years, but at what point did you say, how did you take those steps to have it actually make money for you? What did you have to do? Um, the biggest thing, um, once you start doing it and you're, you've built kind of a platform, yeah. brands will reach out to you. Okay. That's kind of what showed me really. Cause it, it was kind of early on. There were a lot of bigger blog. There were a, like a good handful of big blogs out there. Yeah. And then just a lot of that kind of hobbyist mommy blogs out there. Yeah. Um, and so I didn't really put myself in the category or in the shoes of the few big ones that were there. Right. Um, so I didn't really, it was kind of that I'm just doing it and I'm not, I'm not them. So okay. I had to get over that in my own mind and in my own head that, you know, kind of that imposter syndrome. I'm not adequate enough like they are. They've been doing it or they have this background or they came from this design studio and they're doing this type of a thing. Yep. and get past it. And then once I did, and once I really rebranded and, and kicked it into higher gear, I put together my own media wow. kit and, okay. um, and a pitch and really wow. made, and even now, I mean, it's something that I still do. I still pitch brands. I make lists of kind of those dream brands that I want to work, work with. Yep. Who is it that I want to work with and, and start sending it away. And the worst thing is they say no, or they don't answer me, or maybe eventually they will. Um, but I just put it out there and put my name out there and, you know, send an email. Oh, I love it. So, mm -hmm. it's, but again, you're working in your business. It's always something that you're, you're evolving and you're growing and you're finding those people that you want to work with. And so then you're right. able to bring that into your business. Mm -hmm. oh. yep. So what has been the one of the hardest obstacles that you've had to go through since you started the business? Um, I think just pushing past a couple of them, pushing past that, um, those feelings of inadequacy or just those kind of um, imposter syndrome feelings. Yeah. Um, 
so I've learned how to kind of rewrite the script, tell myself a different story when those feelings rise up. Um, and then also I think just as a working mom is that whole balance thing, the elusive balance. And I actually, in our last magazine, wrote an entire article on it because it's something I'm really beginning to grasp now when I have an 11 year old, an eight year old, a five and a two, you know what I mean? Like my oldest has been around for a while yeah. and, and now I'm realizing, okay, that the whole idea of balance and priorities is fluid. And I think that concept is huge. That balance is fluid. Yeah. Um, and as working moms, like my overarching priority in my life is my family. Yes. But weekly and daily, that changes and there's days where they're not and I have to be okay with it because yeah. or or sometimes it changes hourly but realizing that this few hours that I'm spending working or this hour my kids aren't my priority and that's okay I've set them up where they're okay yeah. um, or like if they're in school or something it's a you know and this my priority right now is my other baby this business yeah but then when I have time with my family or I'm spending intentional time with my kids, right. they're my priority. So the business <laughs> and the other things have to take a backseat at that point and really just kind of defining those times. Um, because working from home or that home business, that kind of just wants to like weave its way in every moment and every thought and, you know, okay, hold on. Let me just send a couple more emails. Yes. But you know, making sure that I have those kind of times that are separated for what my priority is in the moment and realizing it's okay for that to be fluid and to shift. Obviously I know overall my family is my priority, but I can't take care of them if I yeah. don't have a business or money to do that. <laughs> so it's this or a different job. Yeah. You know? So yeah. So just, but defining those times I think was one of the biggest obstacles well, and I think that's something that totally, like, you know, that schedule. And I think that, you know, I don't know if it's just, if it's just me, but a lot of times you kind of get, if you come from corporate, you kind of have in your head this, you know, Monday through Friday, nine to five or whatever it is. And that's, you know, as a mother, it just doesn't, you know, owning your own business. And like you said, you know, sometimes if you have to take the kids to school or they have an activity or whatever it is, I mean, you're taking those breaks out of the day. So creating that schedule and giving yourself grace of knowing that your schedule is going to look different than other people. And again, it's, it's, you know, if you say, okay, Hey, can we, you know, I can only meet between these hours or I'm checking emails. And that's, I think the emails and the social media, that's like a big a lot, part of it. You know, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you get sucked in. I mean, I've actually started not even opening Facebook on my computer when I'm working because I'll see notifications and I'm like, what? oh, what's that? What's that? Yeah. An hour later, what am I doing? So yes. you know, setting those schedules and those times for those things, because then when you are, like you said, when you're spending that intentional time with your family, you are 100% in that moment where, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and then you're a hundred percent in the business. So having that mind and that schedule of knowing when you need to do each thing, it gives you that, that sense of, um, not that you're not overwhelmed. You're, you're just right. like, it helps take out the overwhelm and it helps take out the guilt. A lot of times we feel guilt because I'm like, Oh, I'm doing this. And my kids are over there playing and they're sad that I'm not playing with them. Yeah or something, but realizing that, okay, but I'm going to spend this time here. And then when I am playing with them and I go to play with them, I'm going to be intentional about that time and have eye contact and have, you know, like last night I was sitting on the rug in our living room floor because my daughter was like, mommy, come on. And you know, we had a tea party, a fake tea party, but I didn't have, you know, like, well, I did, I did an Instagram story. So I did have my phone for a minute, but then I put it over on the table and then just sat with her and and play and make sure that I have those intentional moments with them where it's not kind of that wishy-washy time yep. in business and in family. Totally. Mm -hmm. So, okay. A bit, your, your blog is online. A big piece of your marketing is social media. How has that like played a role in, you know, you started this blog as a hobby and you, you were blogging and how has social media been able to help build your audience and grow your business? I don't think that my blog would exist without social media. And honestly, 
Um, I mean, I guess it would, but there probably wouldn't be anyone reading it. <laughs> um, and then also I feel like a lot of um, influence or, or things have shifted to social media. So um, just kind of as an example, there's sometimes there's brands that I work with that I don't do anything with them on the blog itself, but I create content that's just for social media. So a lot of people are ingesting content in different ways. Right. A lot of it is through social media. Yeah. Um, for my blog itself, Pinterest is huge for me. Um, that's where the visuals and the images come in handy and come into play because that's what drives a lot of traffic to my blog posts. Yes. And then I feel like um, Instagram is another one where it's a social media platform that's almost a micro blog in itself. Yeah. There are times where it's an image and I do a short caption, but like I said, there are brands that I work with that, that we just work on Instagram or Instagram and Facebook or right. you know, something like that. And it doesn't even carry over into the blog, even though they're connected. Um, they're all under the, I guess, Tabitha blue or fresh mommy blog umbrella. Um, so they're similar, but it, that, so it does drive traffic to the blog, but then it's also becoming its own kind of thing. And so there are a lot of, businesses and influencers and people doing an online business that don't have a blog um, at all. Yeah. Yeah. They're just uh, doing Instagram or just right. doing social media. Exactly. And maybe they'll have kind of like what you have or they have trainings or different things. Right. Um, but it's not necessarily in a blog format, but right. then social media is what really is a good platform for, for connection and connectivity and also driving traffic to whatever it is that you're online businesses. Mm -hmm. Love it. Yeah. So social media is huge. Huge. Yeah. And it's something that I, um, I think more and more people are becoming more comfortable with it, but we always say find those platforms that you feel comfortable with. Like my favorite is Pinterest, Instagram, and then Facebook and mm -hmm. Facebook's more because, you know, it's one of those things that like you, you kind of have to have that one. <laughs> yes. If you, you know, if you love Twitter, go for Twitter. If you're not in love with Twitter, you know, it's important to be consistent and a hundred percent committed to those profiles. So it's like, if you choose three, do great with those and then grow into the others if you need to um, yes. build a brand. And it's really, it's, I think social media has taken such a huge shift this year alone and really that establishing relationships before, you know, brands would just post, 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 post. And it was a one way street. And I feel like now people feel like they're able to actually connect with these brands. So it's really about building those relationships. I feel. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Wow. And that's what I think that's why people are drawn to social media because it does bring an element of that when you put that into it. Yep, definitely. So, okay. Last question. What is one piece of advice you would give to a mom that is thinking of starting an online business, whether it's a blog or online store, whatever it may be? Um, I think the biggest thing is the idea of fluid priorities, fluid balance. Um, I think that's the biggest piece of advice for any mom that's going into really any kind of business, whether it's for someone else, whether it's becoming a CEO of an, you know, someone else or starting your own business online store, brick and mortar, whatever it is, is realizing that you're as a mom and with kids, your priorities are going to change. Right. Um, it's easy to put in the work and the effort into the business and then feel guilty about your family. And, and then it's also easy to, um, see like, um, what other people doing something and doing well, and then almost feel guilty for not putting enough into your business because you are spending time with your family. And so realizing that you are the one that gets to define your priorities. No one else needs to, no one else can, no one else should. Mm -hmm. You get to define what your priorities are on a day to day or even an hourly basis. And so set those, realize it's going to change and grow with you and then be okay with that. Ah, I love it. Thank you so much, Tabitha, for being Thank you so much for having me. And if you guys want to check out her blog, I highly recommend it, freshmommyblog.com. And if you guys are really serious about starting a freelance business and you need the tools on how to do it, check out Social Speak Network. We are here to help you grow. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Appreciate you having me. Bye.